Welcome to Real Talk for Real Teachers. I'm Dr. Becky Bailey, the creator of Conscious Discipline. I'm an expert in education, child development, and a lifelong teacher and learner. For those listening who are not aware of Conscious Discipline yet, it is a comprehensive, brain-based, trauma-informed, social-emotional learning program. But yet it is unique in that it integrates school climate, classroom management, and self-regulation into one seamless system. Today we are talking about conscious discipline in secondary school. I invite you to join Afton, an 8th and ninth grade English teacher from Arkansas, and myself as we explore how she implemented conscious discipline in her secondary classrooms. Welcome, I'm here with Afton Schleife. So Afton, tell me about what you do and your position. So I teach 8th and ninth grade English at a junior high school in Arkansas, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so people think of conscious discipline, and often they think either early childhood or, or at best, elementary. Mm -hmm. So now here you're in 8th grade, 8th and ninth grade. So one, how did you hear about it? And two, then we'll go into how in the world you figured out how to implement it. So I heard about it a couple of years ago. Jill Moley came to our district mm -hmm. in Springdale and she put on a session, I think it was titled Conscious Discipline for Secondary. And at the time I had been teaching for 10 years and I thought, oh, you know, I'll go do a refresher on some discipline classroom uh, management. I probably need, you know, <laughs> to revisit that. After 10 years, yeah. you could, yeah. Uh, I'll see what's new. <laughs> And I kind of teased a little bit and thought, oh, what is this, discipline that's conscious? Okay, I don't know. And kind of on a whim, I went to it, fell in love with it. I think it was the first break. I ran over to Jill and I started talking to her and I was like, this makes sense to me. I mean, I think I had tears in my eyes because I was thinking internally first just about my own healing and for me. Yes. And I was just amazed. So of course that night, I called everyone I knew in my family, in my school, my principal. I said, this is the best training I have ever been to. There's a book. And can I please have this book? Is there money? And my principal said, yes, there's money. Are you willing to lead this book study that you're telling me about if I buy a book for all of the faculty? I said, yes. And so that first year we got the book, I led the book study. Um, and then the next year, I went. I commit. I made a commitment with Jill that summer, and I said um, that I'm going to go to CD1. And so that next year, a, a group of us went to CD1 from my school, um, and of course, deepened my learning and my own practice. And a, a lot of reflections happened at CD1. Some things started clicking. Yeah. The right mm -hmm. information yeah, came bet. at the right time. Yeah, yes. Um, and my journey has just continued on from there. One of the questions I always get is how in the world do you do conscious discipline with eighth graders at a junior high school? And my response is always, if I can do it with myself and I'm much older than an eighth grader, then why couldn't I do it with uh, someone who's- Brilliant answer. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use that one. Yes, yes that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. So what did you do first? I mean, so, I have several questions, they're all rushing, like I just want to know, but let's go back to the book study. Mm -hmm. How many, did you get resistance? How many actually were on board with you mm -hmm. uh, when you went through that book study? Yes, we got resistance. Um, on board, it was, it was just anybody who was willing. Um, it was not a mandate right. by the principal, which I appreciated. Yeah. Um, so everyone was given a book when we came back to school in August and I just made an announcement and my principal gave me a couple minutes and I just went up there with my excitement and I invited everyone, you have this book, if you are willing, I am going to host these um, sessions in my classroom. I did one before school and after school. Um, for anyone who could come and make time. And I invite, even if you didn't read the section, please come, let's discuss, let's talk about scenarios that are happening in your classroom. Let's talk about things that are happening in your household with your own kids, with yourself, with your spouse, with 
your family members. And how many did you get, roughly, ballpark-ish? Mm -hmm. um, I would say that maybe 15 out of about 55. Wow, well that's so. a good, that's a mm -hmm. good bit. Mm -hmm. And did, they, did that 15 kind of stick with it? Or at the end of the day, mm -hmm. how many really kind of joined you on the effort? I would say that 15 was 15? a pretty committed 15. I think so. And so when you started putting it in your classroom and these other people started putting it in the classroom, did that influence some of the other folks a little bit? Mm -hmm. It definitely did. And I think my passion for it just yes. kind of radiated yes. out. And then the students would go and talk about, well, in Ms. Schleif's classroom, we did this and they started teaching others. And so just little bits and pieces, I think, was helpful for those teachers who were a little resistant because they thought, oh, well, I can, I can do this breathing. I mean, yeah, I, I can do that. You can do that. Mm -hmm. So that's, I find that interesting what you just said is that once the students got wind of it, then they kind of were part of the movement to encourage others to come along. And that's interesting because one of the excuses that people say is my kids are too old for that. You know, it's like, oh, that's something you would do with a 10-year-old or with a 5-year-old or with a 6-year-old. And what I'm hearing you say is once the students got a grasp of it or an understanding of it, they themselves would have liked to have seen it spread throughout the school. Is that correct? That is correct. And a reflection that I've had is when people say conscious discipline is babyish. And again, I'm like, it's conscious discipline is not babyish. Again, you can... You can practice it at any age, and most importantly, with yourself. But it's the structures that people view as babyish. Right. And those can be tweaked to fit your personality, your students, and your situation. Yes, and as kids get older, the structures aren't quite as important as it is for them to grasp the powers mm -hmm. so they can start managing their own mind, you know. So it does switch slightly. Mm -hmm. With young kids, you'd have a lot of structures because they need that. They don't really read and write well. They can't uh, reflect. Mm -hmm. But as you get older, you have that same skill we have of reflection, of, of wondering and taking things internally and seeing how they fit with your life. Mm -hmm. So to me, it makes complete sense. So give me then, let's take that on okay. since we went there. So what are some of the structures you found helpful and the kids seem to uh, enjoy? Okay, so the Brain Smart Start, yes. beginning class. And I, at my school, we have seven different class periods for about 47 minutes. Um, and so p some of the resistance was, I only have 47 minutes and I have to teach English or I have to teach math and that takes too long and I don't have time. Um, and so I've timed it. I, I've timed the brain smart start and that is probably, that I think that was voted the most one and surprisingly to me because I had my own story I was projecting and I didn't think it was going to be, but the wish well mm. was very powerful for them. Um, but the brain smart start, I think max three, four minutes and then we were together the rest of the time, present. And if someone wasn't present, we had the skills to be able to help that person come back to us. Um, and so... So let me just see. So a, th a three minute, let's say mm -hmm. three minute ish investment mm -hmm. out of 47, what you're saying kept them engaged and attentive for the 44 left. It truly did. And if, I, if, and, Sometimes we do veer off and our mind wanders. And, yes. And so the transitions that I've been able to implement, let's say I notice that the class is feeling really kind of down mm -hmm. for, for whatever's going on out in the world, out in the hallways. We would take 30 seconds, stand up, go give someone a high five and tell them something good that's going on in your life right now. Or if we needed to calm and breathe, I mean, just rubbing the hands and the breathing was a fast one that I found. And so I might have to give up a maximum of one more minute incrementally here and right. there. But yes, we were able to be present. And if we weren't, we could get back on track more quickly versus before conscious discipline. I'm a yeller. And mm -hmm. so that was kind of my skill. And so I would just yell, hey, come on, let's go. What are you doing? Oh, my God. And I think I spent, I would lose multiple minutes. I mean, probably 
twenty percent of class mm -hmm. spread out throughout the class, right? Dealing with conflict. Yeah, and, and yes. pulling them back together. Yes. So the investment you're saying just in, and in, in the Brain Smart Start paid off in learning. And did you see that reflected in uh, discipline referrals or grades or? Or how did that reflect in those things we quote measure, so mm -hmm. to speak? So, the first year that I started practicing conscious discipline, which was not a complete practice, a right. full understanding, and I do think that with conscious discipline and practicing, it's something that we're all always going to be working yes. towards and practicing. Yes, it's definitely a practice. It's never over, which I kind of enjoy because yeah. then I'm always in it. Um, the first year, amazingly enough, 79% of my students on the state test had um, average to high growth. Mm -hmm. So that was their growth, not that they were on level, but growing from the previous year, right. which was huge. And then this past year, on our um, interim test, mm -hmm. preparing for the state test, which we don't have our results back for yet, 91% yes. of my students were on or above grade level. Which was huge. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is, those numbers are huge. Mm -hmm. Well, that is exciting. Congratulations okay. uh, for uh, trusting the process mm -hmm. and, and going with your gut, because I, I heard earlier it resonated with you and you just grabbed hold. Mm -hmm. So let's go back. So the, I, my experience in working with older uh, students is they've always adored the wish well. They have got so much on their heart and their mind uh, and so much, uh, so much of world coming at, at, at them mm -hmm. that that wish well. I've had it where you put up a thing and you couldn't find one inch left on that. They'll squeeze little writings in it. Mm -hmm. So you two found that out. They like the wish well. So tell us about that. So the, I was hesitant. That was yeah. not something that I added my first year yeah. just because I was afraid with all that was going on with the world. With, is that going to be religious? Is that too hippy-dippy? Yeah. I was hesitant. Yes. So if anyone else out there is hesitant, it's okay. It is okay. <laughs> it, it definitely is okay. It's your energy on it that's going to sell it anyway. So that's right. if you're hesitant, leave it out. Mm -hmm. And so last year I thought, you know what? I'm all in. I'm going to try it. And so I led the first wish well. It does eventually become a student job if they're willing to do it. And they love that job. Well, they love all the jobs, but they particularly want to lead that one. And so we just did a quick wish well. Again, I think in my classroom, I just say to the student job, 10 seconds. You know, just set a timer on your phone real quick. And we turn our focus inward and we think of somebody that we want to send well wishes and we and I kind of lead them in different practices. Mm -hmm. Think of someone you're having conflict with. Think of someone in this room that you noticed today. Sometimes the students will stand up and say, I need well wishes, this is what's going on, and they will share. And so we take that. And the first time I did it, every single class period that day, I found people were crying because it just resonated with them. They were just so... Uh -huh involved in sending that positivity out and if I could I have a big aha mm -hmm. I would love to share please please tell us well. about it yes <laughs> so um, when I first learned about wish well I thought it was just this amazing power that I sent out to people yes like it was a superhuman power and it, I kind of was able to happy people up or I yeah. was able to contribute to their state and here yeah. I am shooting out you know, yeah. all this love yeah. Well, I found earlier in the year when this uh, student started to take over the wish well job, he made an oops and instead of 10 seconds, he said, we're gonna wish well for a minute. And I heard like, wah, wah, wah. I thought, nope, we're going with it, we're going. And internally I'm thinking, oh my goodness, a whole minute, we got this, <laughs> <laughs> we got this. And so what I chose to do with that minute is I looked at every student in that class as you know, they're not looking at me, but yeah. I'm looking at them saying, I wish you well, and I'm really focused on that. And the rest of the class period, it went beautifully. It was like the perfect class. And I have lunch next. And by the way, this is a on level English class. This is not super high, yeah. amazing, well behaved, pristine. Yeah. You know, the kids were not perfect. I yes. do not want to, <laughs> to um, portray that. but. I sat down and ate my lunch and I thought, what was different? 
was my lesson just on today? Yeah. And then I thought, well, wish well was really long. And at that moment, I realized that those students were still pushing my trigger buttons, but I viewed them differently. And so every interaction I had was positive. And so I thought, oh, silly Afton. Wish well isn't just for the other person. It's no. for me too. Yeah. And I didn't get that. It's amazing how life present you a situation that'll, that allows that information to come in. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and the wish well is the fast track from your lower center to your higher center. And once you get up to that higher to center, life does look a little more uh, pleasant to mm -hmm. us and we can see the best in others. So good for you. I mean, it happens. I mean, it still happens to me. I mean, every sometimes I'll be talking and something will come out of my mouth and I'm like, that? It was important, that makes sense. Oh, I get it. Mm -hmm. Right in the middle of saying something I might have been saying a hundred times, I'll say something in a different way and all of a sudden I'm like, I get my own saying. It was like, wow, that just happened yesterday in class. Oh. So it was pretty cool. Uh, so you have, now you have, you've been mentioning jobs. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you've got how many kids in a class? Um, I can have up to 30. So usually it's like 25 to 27. Okay, 25 to 27 students in seven periods. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a plan period. Okay, so yeah. six. So 25, let's just take 25. Okay. 25 students, six periods, mm -hmm. 47 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell me, how, did, how do you do this job thing? So I sat down, that, and this was something I felt comfortable implementing my first year. Um, and I just sat down and thought, what were some of the jobs that were important? for my class to run, what was really needed. Mm -hmm. And so I came up with a list and I really tried to come up with like 40 jobs, just more than what I would have in a class because each class period, some, some of the jobs will repeat and some of them, depending on if they're beginning or end of the day, mm -hmm. they won't. Um, and I just came up with a list like that. For example, attendance person, um, receptionist, answer the phone, an important one for me is timekeeper. So mm -hmm. that person gets my attention 10 minutes before class to help me with timing of my lesson. Um, good things, which is, a, we, it's an activity we do where we separate into our groups um, and we share something good that's going on in our lives. And then the good thing person just will randomly call out, all right, Becky, share what good things going on in your life right now. Um, and they love that to play that. So we play that a couple times a week. And so we did, I mean, we have a ton of jobs. So, and how do the students respond to those? They respond well. I, I haven't mean, received much resistance. And if there, there have been jobs that I have thought, you know, so I came up with one because that first year I was like, what do I do? What's important? Um, and I did get stuck. And so I thought, well, organizer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do need help organizing sometimes. And that was a job that didn't need to be completed every single day and it started to fall by the wayside. Mm -hmm. And so I just revisited that with the student. And I said, do you feel like you're contributing to the class? And turns out, no, they didn't. Yeah. They were watching all these other students, the lights, hey, you know, go get the lights, uh, Maria. And she would go get the lights. Um, but the student wasn't able to contribute. And I thought, well, let's, what can we do differently? And so I found that I don't have to be the keeper of all the information and come up with all the ideas that the students can contribute as well. And so a lot of the jobs I have now were not even created by me halfway through the year. Hey, can I do this job? That's perfect. I didn't know we needed an artist. That was one that I would never have thought of, but the student did. And so the student would come, he would like run to class and grab the markers and so he could be the first one there and have more time during the passing period. And he would draw a picture on the board. And of course, all the other classes after him would run to class and see, oh, what did Jorge draw today? I can't wait to see what it is. And so, I mean, utilizing yourself and what is important to you for your classroom to run, what's really helpful, but then utilizing your students. You know, that's, uh, uh, I mean, that sounds simple. Mm -hmm. But we just don't think like that because a lot of people say, oh my gosh, uh, I can't, how could we possibly do this with 13, 14, 15 year olds? And I'm like, 
how could we possibly do anything with a two, three, and a four, and a five-year-old? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, they certainly can contribute some degree, but it really is falling on us to be the creative one and, the, uh, and to get it going, and then they'll take over after a while. But when you get up uh, to, uh, to the eighth and ninth grade, you can create this just like you said, they set up their own goal, their own vision. How do you want this class to run and now make it happen? Uh, to me, it sounds simpler than trying to do it with a three-year-old. But For me uh, as well, yes. yes. <laughs> so if you had uh, like three things mm -hmm. and uh, to all the upper grades or, uh, and that have, I have 50 minutes. I'm going to make it 50. Mm -hmm. I have 50 minutes. I have six periods. And... I can't imagine investing this time or investing time in going through the book, investing time in learning about uh, conscious discipline. And, and basically, just to remind people, conscious discipline is really just a way to help everyone set and achieve their goals and be aware when they're off in the weeds and become conscious of when they're off their path and be willing to come back to that path. That's as simple as we can say it. So what would be some things you would say to other uh, junior high, secondary uh, teachers or principals? So the most powerful thing for me has truly been the change in myself. Um, so and if you invested your time in something, personally, I'm going to suggest investing time in doing the book study, or if you're a video person watching the videos, the Building Resilient Homes and Schools video series was very powerful and well received by um, my faculty because they could not only watch the videos but download the audio and just go on a walk and listen. So I do think the change in oneself is the most important thing mm -hmm. because that radiates out. Something else that I kind of got stuck on but then sort of released was um, I got really into using the language and the right words and would sort of, oh, what are you doing? Kind of internally beat myself up. But what I noticed with the students, if my intention was there because I've done all this internal work, they still felt it. They were positively impacted by what I was trying to do mm -hmm. and so supportive of me. So the posters and all these structures, while, while they are great, even if you don't have them, and I did not have them that first year, and still look at my test scores. Right. Um, and I have many, many quotes from students just saying, her classroom felt safe, I felt noticed, I was seen. It feels different in there. It feels like a family in her classroom. I love that Ms. Schleif invests in me. And I didn't have the words and I didn't have the structures. I did not even have what would be considered a correct brain smart start. But the fact that I was trying and we were calming and connecting, they did felt it. it. Did it. I mean, that is beautiful because you summed up the essence, the true essence of what conscious discipline is. It is about changing yourself first and being very, very conscious of your intention and understanding intention changes the outcomes. And the words and the structures and all that flew flew around it are just reminders for us. They're not really that important if we can do those two things. So thank you so much, Afton, for uh, stepping out there and kind of being a pioneer uh, in secondary school and certainly for sharing it with us. Of course. Well, even though I was sitting right there, I still find that interesting. So what are we celebrating? Well, I'm going to celebrate Afton's beautiful statement. If I can do conscious discipline with myself, I can certainly do it with anyone in secondary schools. Beautiful statement and makes so much sense. And I never thought to answer it that way. But if anyone asks me again, oh, I, you can't do conscious discipline with these older kids, I'm going to say, well, I do it with myself and I'm a lot older than they are. So what's Becky up to? Well, I'm in the process of planning my first trip and we're taking a, a team of master instructors over to China. So that process of beginning that training project starts this October. So I'll be doing a little bit of training. Others will be doing more training and I will be doing public relations work. So all y'all out there, and you know me, need to be wishing me well in my public relations career here. So it is very exciting. We're so much looking forward to it. 
So, until next time, I wish you well. For more episodes of Real Talk with Real Teachers by Dr. Becky Bailey, visit ConsciousDiscipline.com forward slash podcasts. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app.